In this video, I'm going to show you how to use graphite and watercolors to create aerial perspective. It's also known as atmospheric perspective. So when you have a landscape, and here I've, I've got, done two simple drawings that show um, layers of mountains. So each layer gets a little bit further away. Um, you can add trees or other things to it if you want to, and they don't have to look just like this. Um, you just need to make sure that you have multiple layers that go back in space. So when you're looking through all that air and all those air particles, and you can see that far away, generally things tend to get lighter in value and a little bit bluer. For whatever reason, that's what happens when you look through all those air particles at one time. So up here, we're gonna do this one in watercolor and we're gonna do this one in graphite. And we're gonna work on them back and forth so that while we're waiting for things to dry in watercolor, we can be working with the graphite. So I've got a watercolor set, I've got a paintbrush, I've got a variety of graphite shading pencils, I have a blending stump and a paper towel. So the first thing that we're gonna do is start painting this in watercolor. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the sky, but I wanna keep it really, really light. So I'm gonna add some water to the case of my watercolor set. And then I'm gonna dip it in the blue just barely because I want a really, really watery light blue. And when you're painting with watercolor, you need to work quickly. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I'm gonna mix up the color. So to work quickly, I need to have enough of what I'm mixing that I don't run out. So I want enough that it's gonna carry me across this whole shape and I won't have to remix anything. So I've got a nice watery blue I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start on the left and move to the right. If you're left-handed, you may wanna work the opposite way. I'm gonna paint into here, and you can barely tell, which is totally fine. I want a really, really light blue right now. I can always do another layer and make it darker if I want to. But it's a lot harder to make it lighter. So I'm gonna work my way across. And the reason you have to move quickly is, especially if you're working with a darker color, if this area dries before you add some paint to the area beside it, they won't bleed well and you'll get lines. So you want everything to blend really well. Watercolor paper works better, but for this I'm just using drawing paper since it's just a simple exercise that I'm practicing how to use. And the drawing paper actually dries a little quicker than the watercolor paper, so I won't have to wait too long. Okay, so I've got my sky painted. I'm gonna let that dry, and while that's drying, I'm gonna come down here and move into the graphite one. So to start with the graphite, I'm going to start with an HB pencil, a really, really light pencil. And I don't want this value to be dark yet. I'm going to start by leaving the sky white. I might go back into that later. We'll see. I'm going to go with this layer of mounts. It's going to be my lightest value. So I'm using the HB pencil. And I don't want to hold my pencil up this way or I'll get a lot of marks. And I want this to be really um, solid and light gray looking without much texture in it um, because it's so far away we'll add more texture as we move forward. So I'm going to turn the pencil on its side, get it as far on its side as I can and I'm going to press really lightly and just get a really light value. And now I'm going to go in with the blending stump. And I'm going to shade, press really lightly just to smooth some of that out. Now, the lines dividing my mountains are pretty dark because I wanted you to be able to see them in the video. Um, but you don't need to be working with lines that are this dark. If your lines are this dark, I would actually erase them so that they barely show up. You don't want your your mountains to be strong outlines. So I'm 
almost done with this layer. I'm just trying to make the lightest value that I can make and still show up. I'm turning my blending stump in different directions to try to just find really what's going to make the smoothest look. You have to think about things while you're making marks, like notice things. Notice like if I turn the tool this way, what does it do? If I turn the tool that way, what does it do? You have to be very aware of what you're doing and when something works or doesn't work, take note of that and remember that for, for the future. Okay, so I'm done with that layer. All right, we're gonna go back to watercolor. So I'm gonna group I'm gonna group these three layers together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it mostly blue. I'm adding a little bit of blue to the water that I had with the sky. I'll rinse that off. And I'm gonna add a little bit of green to that too. So it's making kind of a green blue. This, is a, this value should be a little bit darker than the sky. And I'm just gonna go in and paint all of these together and let them dry. And then I'll show you how we can differentiate those values, make each of these three layers that I'm painting at the same time look different. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and go back to the graphite. Okay, moving back to graphite, I'm gonna stay with that HB pencil. I'm gonna turn it on its side and I'm gonna shade in the next layer of mountains that's closer to me. And I'm pressing just a little bit harder, but not much harder, just a little bit. And I'm keeping it on its side. I'm not holding it, like if you look at my hand, I don't have the pencil resting here. I have the pencil like, turned this way like I might hold a knife to if I was cutting food and holding a knife like that that's kind of how I'm holding the pencil and you can play around with different ways that's not the only way to do it but you can play around with different ways to hold it to get that to get this side of the pencil and it takes practice to be able to control the pencil with different hand grips. All right, so now that that's a little bit darker, I'm gonna go in and shape that in with the blending stump. And it's gonna get even darker when you do the blending stump. I'm trying to press really lightly because I don't want it to get too dark. Now we're gonna go back to these mountains. So, I still got a lot of this value mixed up, this color that I've already made. I'm gonna just paint over, I'm gonna leave this one alone. I'm gonna use this and just paint a second layer on top of these two, and that's gonna make these two darker than this one. So I'm not gonna change it at all because I've got quite a bit left. I'm just gonna paint another layer. And so this one's already looking a little bit darker than the one behind it, just from having two layers on it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry again and go back into graphite. This time I'm gonna get my 2B pencil. Same thing, I'm gonna turn it on its side and try to keep it pretty light. If I'm shading and it looks like it matches the one next to it, that's probably fine because it's going to get darker when I use that blending stump. So this even actually looks a little bit lighter, but I think that when I go over it with the blending stump, it'll be darker than, than that layer that's behind it. So let's see if this gets dark enough. 
using the blending stump. If it doesn't, I can always go back over it and shade it a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna go back into the watercolor one now. I'm running out of this color a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little more water and I made it originally just using blue. So I'm gonna add some blue back in and I got, that's probably too dark. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And as things are moving forward in space, I'm gonna add a little bit of green to it because it's gonna be getting gradually more green. So my goal is that this is just a darker, just a little bit darker and a little bit more green layer. So I keep adding water because I'm worried that it's too dark. So I'm going to go over this value with just this layer now. So the goal is to make this one just a little darker and greener than the one behind it. Okay, going back into graphite. I've got one little area here, and this may be on the same plane as this one. So I'm gonna use my 2B again, and I'm just pressing a little bit harder, and maybe I am not using the side anymore. I've switched it so that I'm using my normal grip, but I'm trying not to press too hard, because I naturally press harder with my normal grip. But I wanna press just a little harder than I was pressing in this layer. You can also see there's a little bit more direction change in the line here. Like up here, it's fairly smooth, but here it's almost like you can see, like it's a little more bumpy. You can see a little bit more of what the trees are doing at the top of the mountains. Okay, I'm gonna smooth that one out. I think this is on the same plane as this over here. So I'm gonna shade this one in now the same way. So I'm gonna keep working forward with my mountains and I'm gonna do my trees last. I wanna add a little more green to this. And this is the next layer, so I'm going to paint this one. And it may need two coats, we'll see. It depends on how much water there is in it. What we want to do is paint it and then let it dry and compare this value to that value. And if this value is darker, then it's fine. Okay, while that's drying, we're gonna do this layer. So this layer is where I'm gonna start with my 4B. So 4B is a little bit darker than the 2B. <clears throat> I'm still gonna hold it with my normal pencil grip. I'm not pressing as hard as I can. So I'm just pressing hard enough that it's darker or about the same as the layer before because when I do that blending stump, it's gonna get darker again. You can also feel when you're shading, after you've been shading for a little bit, you start getting a flat side to the pencil. Sometimes it's easier to use that flat side when you're not trying to have pencil marks show up. So right here, I don't have very much contrast between the trees that I have here and the and the mountain behind it. And I want those to show up a little bit more. So I'm gonna come back in and where I was talking about the flat side of your pencil, I'm gonna use the pointed side to get just a baby bit of texture in there. 
and let those show up. So some texture indicates that they're a little bit closer. I'm gonna use a lot more texture in the ones up here. So they're a little bit closer that now that we can see texture and it's just giving a little bit more contrast between the trees and the mountain behind them so they stand out a little bit more. And if there's any parts of the mountain that you feel like are getting lost with the mountain behind it, you can go back in, press just a little bit harder near that edge and have that show up just a little bit better. Also, see where I have it darker up here? Sometimes it's nice to have some variation, like not have it exactly the same all the way across. It just makes it a little more interesting and less, less flat, like it has more dimension. So I'm making this area darker and then it's gradually fading out over here. And here where I've got like several things going on, like another mountain coming in here and that mountain there, I may choose to make this area just a little bit darker too to make it clear that that's, this is the one that's the closest. And then these trees are a little bit darker. All right, I'm gonna go back to the watercolor now. So I'm gonna leave the trees alone for a little bit. I think this value is good, it's darker than that one. I'm gonna add a little more green. I'm not adding any more water, just straight green. And I'm going to go with this layer. And I'm pretty sure that after this dries, I'm going to want to paint one more layer on top of this so that it can be clearly darker than that layer. So I'm gonna let that dry. And now I'm going to use my 6B. So I've got my 6B pencil. I'm still not pressing quite as dark as I can. I'm gonna save that for the texture on top. I'm gonna to shade in pretty dark values on everything. I'll blend it in with the blending stump and then I'm gonna put some texture on these trees. Since they're the closest to the viewer, you probably see a little bit of detail. But the texture's not gonna show up at all if this whole area is just straight up black. So I'm going for a dark gray, but I don't want it to be black. So I'm gonna end up sharpening my 6B pencil so I can get some texture on here. But before I go and do all of the texture, um, I'm gonna go back to watercolor since this is getting close to being finished and we're gonna to have to wait for a few things on this to dry. So I wanna go back to this real quick. So I'm gonna go back into the same green that I already made. I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'm just gonna paint one more layer on this hill just to give it a little bit darker of a value. Okay, while that's drying, I'm gonna go back in and do the texture for these trees. So I sharpened my 6B pencil and I'm gonna go back in and I am now pressing pretty much as hard as I can and I'm just kind of scribbling a little bit. So I'm scribbling some marks on top of these trees and I'm kind of fading them out as I go down. So I'm, I'm kind of making these like up and down and then kind of like scribbly, like up and down, scribbly. And the purpose is to try to make it look like it could be like the branches and the leaves and things in the trees. 
because the closer that you are, the more details you see. So these trees, you wouldn't see very many details. You wouldn't see much texture. But these trees that are closer, I'm gonna add these little scribble marks to just indicate that there's more texture. It's easier to see them because they're closer to the viewer. I'm also adding some darker values while I'm doing this because the things that are the closest can have some of the darkest values. That doesn't mean that there can't be lighter values up in the front. We don't happen to have any lighter values in this drawing up in the front. There can be. It just means that you're going to have a wider value range. You're going to have the you're not going to have any dark values like this in the back with aerial perspective. <clears throat> All right, so I've got a lot of texture. I've got some really dark values. There are some things that I think I do want to go in and clean up, and I'll show you those in a minute, but I'm going to do that while I'm waiting for something to dry up here. I'm going to go back to watercolor. So I'm going to paint these two together to start with and then gradually make one darker. So I'm running out of this color. I need to add more water to it, but when I add more water, I'm lightening it up. So I'm gonna go back and add green. I'm gonna get some more green, and I'm thinking that I actually want the front two layers to be a little bit more yellow green. I'm gonna rinse it out real good so I don't get green in the yellow. I'm gonna get some yellow in that. Not quite as much as I want. I'm gonna get some more. So I'm going to paint these two together. This value is going to initially be lighter than the one behind it. That's okay though, we can paint more than one layer. I think I'm actually going to paint right over the tree too because I'm going to want this tree to be darker than the grass. So I'm going to end up going over it with another layer anyway. So now I'm going to go in and finish up this graphite um, drawing. I'm looking at each of the mountains and I'm seeing like how differentiated are they. So I can clearly see a difference between the trees and this mountain. And this mountain seems like it's clearly separated. There's a decent amount of contrast. But some of these others are getting a little bit lost. So what I'm going to do is just go up at just up to the edge a little bit, not even the whole layer, just coloring in a little bit at the top and you want it to blend in. So now I'm gonna blend that in with the blending stump. So it's okay if it's a little bit darker at the top and gets a little bit lighter as it comes down. I'm gonna go into a few areas over here. You don't want a strong outline and that's what I was saying. If, if, if I wasn't doing this for a video, I would erase that line because I don't want a strong outline showing up, but I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see the value change between that last mountain in the sky um, on the video, so I left that. So this mountain's getting a little lost into that mountain, so I'm gonna come in, shade that just a little bit right there. Go back and blend that in. I'm just gonna clean everything up. Now I'm gonna go back into the watercolor. I'm gonna add a little bit more green, a little bit more yellow, and I'm gonna to have to add water. I'm adding water because I'm gonna run out, but every time I add water, I'm making it lighter, so that means I have to go back into the green. And back into the yellow. I think that's enough. I'm going to paint over both of these again. All 
All right, I think we're still gonna need some more layers in there, but while that's drying, I'm gonna go in and work on the trees. So I want my trees to be also getting gradually darker. I think my trees should be darker than the mountain. So I'm gonna work on a green over here, leave this yellow green alone. And I'm gonna start off by painting the trees just straight up green. And if they need to be blended with another color, I can do that with a layer on top of them later. All right, I gave that a few minutes to dry. I feel like we need to go in with another two layers here. So I can also make this, I'm trying to make this warmer as it gets, as it comes forward, but I also need the value to be darker. So rather than mix just yellow with it, I'm gonna mix a little bit of orange also. And that's gonna keep it warm, but it's also gonna darken the value some too. So while this is drying, I'm gonna go back into these trees over here. Again, I'm just using straight green and I might add a different color to this later, but for right now, just straight green. So I think at this point, the main thing left to do is to finish this front layer because <clears throat> this needs to be a little darker than that one and then to finish this tree. So I'm gonna go over that front layer. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more green and orange. Cause that gave me that warm look that I want, but it's also a little bit darker in value. So I'm gonna go right over this front layer one more time. And then all I'll have to do after this is to paint this tree. And since I'm done with the graphite, I'm gonna still have to wait for this to dry before I do my tree. What I'm actually gonna do, you can use a hair dryer to speed things up if you're waiting on something to dry. So after I get this layer painted, I'm gonna go use a hair dryer <clears throat> and then get that dry so I can start working on the tree. So for the trunk of this tree, I'm just gonna mix up some brown and I'm gonna mix some black with it too because I want this to be pretty dark since it's in the layer that's closest to us. And I may have to let this dry and do two layers. We'll see what it looks like first. Actually, that might be dark enough. So I'm just gonna draw in some little branches and then I'm gonna use the blow dryer and get that dry before I add the leaves. So to make these leaves darker in value, I'm gonna use straight green. And then I'm gonna add some purple because purple will darken it up without making it too dark. So I'm gonna tap that in and I might leave some texture showing through, like if you could see some of the hill behind it. And I think I'm actually gonna to need to do two layers of this. So 
But basically I'm just tapping this in just like this. And I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll do one more layer. To do the second layer, I'm just gonna mix the same value that I had before and just add it right on top. And while I was waiting for it to dry, I noticed something else that was bothering me. And I'm gonna show you how you can fix something like that. These trees, I'm okay with that value. That's not really bothering me as much, but I feel like these trees are too dark. Like I've got this value and then these trees get darker and then I've got that lighter value. So if you feel like you've got something that's too dark, you can always, I'm rinse off my paintbrush, you can always add water. So I'm just gonna paint water right on top of these trees. And then if you get a clean paper towel and blot it with that, you can lift some of that value up. Now I may lift up too much, and if I do, I'm just gonna have to paint some of those trees back in again. Like, and that's what happened. So it got a little too light. So now I can go back in with a green and just be a little more careful this time that it's not too dark. Okay, so I think at this point I'm done. The main thing that I want you to understand is that with aerial perspective, because you're looking through so much air at a landscape that goes so far back, that air that you're looking through, it makes things look lighter, hazier, and bluer. And you also see less detail. So with the watercolor, we kept things lighter and bluer, and we gradually got warmer as we came forward. Warmer meaning we added warmer colors to it. We added orange up here. This was straight up green. And then in the graphite aerial perspective, we used really light values and we gradually got darker as we came forward and we gradually used more mark making to show texture and detail. And so I hope you learned a little bit about how to use graphite and watercolor to show aerial perspective.